Bata-bata, paano ka ginawa? Ako si Angel Rivero and right now I'm with Dr. Eileen Manalo. Thanks, Doc, for fitting this into your very tight schedule. Thank you, Angel. We yeah. have so many questions for you, Doc, mm -hmm. and um, they're actually coming from our Facebook page. Okay. So these are questions thrown from the public and one of them is, could a previous abortion affect my fertility? Yeah, one out of every 10 pregnancies actually ends up in a miscarriage. Okay, so we don't really know what the cause is of, uh, the number one cause is uh, an abnormal baby, mga aneuploidy. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's another cause, which is very obvious, like maybe a myoma or some disease of the mother, yes, it can affect her future pregnancies. Okay, case yeah. to case So you really basis. have to know what the cause is of the, of the miscarriage. All right. Yeah. Now, Doc, from your experience in practice, um, mm -hmm. what are among your most memorable experiences or cases? See, it's so hard when we ask you that, right? <laughs> no, but anyway, maybe two, um, two okay. or three. So one is a 42-year-old uh, um, American who's had two previous uh, failed IVFs. She has a diagnosed case of um, breast cancer um, in remission, and she's ready to have her second baby. And her ovarian uh, reserve is not bad. I did one IVF, uh, one cycle of IVF using letrozole. So there's a specific protocol that's used for, for patients with breast cancer, mm -hmm. making sure that the estradiol level doesn't go up. Remember that breast cancer is a hormone-dependent cancer. That's right. So you don't want to bring, bring up the hormone level. And we just one cycle. We got, um, I think, five embryos. We put in two embryos, and she had a nice pregnancy and delivered a healthy baby, fantastic looking boy. Amazing. So that's and it's nice <laughs> because she's had failed IVFs in the States. So mm -hmm. that was nice. So just one, one, one cycle and she got pregnant. And she's actually um, rooting for another pregnancy. Wow. Because she still has her embryos. <laughs> so, that's, so that's one. The next one is also uh, it's a, it's a foreign patient um, from Denmark. She's mm -hmm. had two failed IVFs. And this is a case of borderline ovarian cancer. And so it was stage 3C. So I had to check the serous adenocarcinoma. So strictly speaking, these patients should not try to get pregnant. They should have full, complete surgery, remove the uterus and the ovaries and even lymph node dissection. But she did go for IVF in, in Denmark and she really was adamant and there was no evidence of disease at the mm -hmm. time. And so with proper informed consent, we went on to do the IVF cycle. And um, yeah, we just one cycle. She had, um, I think, four embryos and then we put in two embryos and she had initially quadruplets and then went down to uh, to twins. So she delivered uh, twins. full term twins. So that was nice. Wow, again. Yeah. that's so really nice. And and I had to, I was convincing her to go for a complete surgery. She said, nope, she wants to have more. But so far, tumor markers are negative and she went back to Denmark. Wow. Well, at the end of the day, you know, despite your good counseling about um, protocols in management. Mm -hmm. Patients would still want to do things their way. And right. I had to, of course, consult an oncologist about that. Mm -hmm. Some cases also of cancer, like um, I had a case of I had a case of uterine cancer in a 41 year old who got pregnant. Starting matigas na ulam paciente, she should have had a hysterectomy actually after getting having had, had delivered their baby, but um, she refused to have. And this patient was lost to follow up, but you know she had a good baby. And that's so interesting because in, in the last few days, we have never really tackled um, the incidence ca of cancer yeah. together. Well, we had oncofertility today and it would have been nice to discuss all those cases, but you can't really, you know, the topics given were different. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned a couple of uh, foreign clients, Doc. So yeah. is that to say that um, you feel, do you feel that the Philippines is also gaining popularity when it comes to medical? Oh, I think so. Medical? I think so. Um, well, we have very good doctors. Mm -hmm. We have doctors in Cebu. We have um, six IVF centers in the country, you know, quite a few centers in Manila. So I think we're getting to be known for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, these patients also are getting to be based here in the Philippines. And so they want to find out if they have a chance of, of uh, fertility management in mm -hmm. our country. Right. So they don't have to go abroad for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's probably more uh, affordable in this country. Compared. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Earlier, Doc, we were also um, we were also talking about... Kung mas masaya yung pasyente. Yun, oh, yun. Hindi na gusto ko itanong. Oh. Okay, okay. I think okay. it's very na. important. You know, yeah. I always tell my patients, the ones who get pregnant are the ones who are very happy about it. You know, very open. They have a very good attitude. Okay. So, like, if I see a glum-looking face, I go, you know, you have to cheer up. Because, you know, this, will, this is a process. You know, you can't get pregnant overnight. It is a process. So, we're going to have to find out what's causing your infertility. And then, we decide what uh, steps to take after that. And not everybody gets pregnant with one cycle. 
Yes. And then you have to talk to them about uh, prognosis, etc. So really, the ones who are very positive, they're persevering, and they're the ones who get pregnant. Diba <laughs> Marie <laughs> so, para sa like, may psychosomatic factor din ba yun, Doc? Yeah, oh, kasi you know, yun nga eh, yung iba hinihysterogram mo nga eh. Hysterogram is very painful without anesthesia. Oh. Yung iba kumakanta pa, nagtetelepono pa, and you know, <laughs> literally, these are the ones who got pregnant. No? But the ones na iyak, hinang, iyak ng iyak, oh, na, Doc, ano pong gagawin ko, what's the next step and all that. And then after one cycle, nag ayu ay ka lang, and you tell them the chance of getting pregnant with insemination is 15 to 18%. Okay, it's not 100%, which means the chance of not getting pregnant is 85% or 80 or whatever. What's the co computation? 85% of not getting pregnant. And yet, niisip nila, babae ba yung magiging anak ko o lalaki? <laughs> Mag Pipintura na ba ako ng, ano, ng nursery ng pink or blue? Oh. So, if they don't get pregnant, iyak na nang iyak. Oh, oh. Nagpapatingin sa'yo, you know, they're looking so glum. So, you really have to have a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. You give them the prognosis. And even if you tell them, okay, our chance of pregnancy is about 60%. You know, you're young, you know, this is in vitro fertilization. And always their expectation is 100%, sometimes 200%. And so, let's like, say you have that failure, because not everybody gets pregnant, obviously. Yeah. If it's a 60% pregnancy rate, that means a 40% failure rate. Okay? Yeah. And you're going to have to try again. Not everybody gets pregnant within mm -hmm. one cycle. But we're very happy if they get pregnant with one cycle because, of course, it's more than that. Yes, right, Doc. Mm -hmm. Positive attitude. Yes. Now, Doc, um, kunyari, super positive na, no? they're really rooting for this. Um, at what point does a patient have to really say na, hmm, maybe I should consider stopping na, if it's too expensive na? Well, yeah, of course, it's always, an, uh, it's, it's always a consideration. And it's actually a communication between doctor and patient. They mm. will have to make the decision. I see. Let's say if you know, like you, as a doctor, you know the prognosis is good, then you, you they really have to convince your patient, I think we should try again. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't give up with this one. Like you do surgery, and then you have to wait a while before they get pregnant. hindi yung, ah, hindi, kailangan magbuntis in one cycle. In one month, magbubuntis ka na. <laughs> Kasi, Doc, I, know I have to travel to the States, ganyan, I have to be there. Na. You can't plan your life that way, you know? And yeah. then, you work on trying to get pregnant, and you say it's a process. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there are patients na siguro medyo matanda na, mm -hmm. mababa na yung ovarian reserve, kakaunti na yung Literally, you're scraping the bottom of those egg cells. Mm -hmm. Or say the count is very low, uh, there's so many factors, endometriosis, na-operahan na ilang beses, nag na ng IVF ilang beses. Oh. Na literally, the next step may, may be donor eggs. And donor eggs, kung himbawa, hindi naman niya gusto mag-kumamit mag ng donor eggs. Mm -hmm. Yun, I mean, you have to, dis you have to make a kumbaga, decision. Uh, tutuloy pa ba ako, or what would be the next step? So, pero iba na nga sa simula pa lang, sabi, I know, that's not for me. I don't want that. Okay. okay? So, you're limited with a certain type of treatment, which may not be the best treatment for them, but it's what they want. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. We've also had stories of uh, patients who, who've had IVF three times, and then dun lang naging successful. Yeah. So, you know, yun nga, there's such a thing as recurrent implantation failure. So, naglagay ka ng embryos, ang gaganda ng embryos, two times, three times, hindi nagtitake. No? And the most reason, the most, well, uh, most common reason for failure is actually a bad embryo. It's an aneuploid embryo, it's an abnormal embryo. But if you're putting good embryos, dapat mag take siya, di ba? There are those who don't believe in such a thing as recurrent implantation failure. Because if money is, a, is a cons money is not a consideration, and if the patient is not going through depression, she's willing to go through it, she mm -hmm. can get pregnant maybe after the third IVF or in the fourth IVF yeah. or the fifth IVF. Okay. And then maybe, you know, for so long as her ovarian reserve is still there, okay. uh, for so long as she's still producing her eggs. That's right, Doc. Mm -mm. Kunyari, Doc, naging successful and then mm -mm. naging pregnant na siya. Mm -mm. Um, are the chances still high in older patients na magkaroon pa rin ng uh, abnormalities or problema para hindi maging normal yung baby? Well, siyempre yung ano, the risk of aneuploidy, which is the chromosomal abnormality, increases as you get older. But you can okay. test that, Doc, while it's still... Um, you can test for aneuploidy. It's like, say, you do IVF, and then before you transfer the embryo, uh, there's such a thing okay. as pre-implantation uh, genetic screening. So mm -hmm. you can check for um, chromosomal abnormalities. The normal chromosome for a male is 46XX. Mm -hmm. uh, XY for the female is 46 XX. So, titignan mo kung may sobra o di so, aneuploid yun. Kung may kulang, aneuploid din. So, yung kulang is Down syndrome, 45X. Right. Kung, kung sobra, 46, uh, 47XXY or XYY, mga ganyan. Yes. So, yun, 
usually hindi nga natutuloy mga yon. At least controlled naman yun, Dok, di ba? Uh, oh. So you have the you have now the option syempre of getting syempre putting in or implanting the good embryos. Okay. Mm -mm. So lahat ng pinag-usapan natin Dok is on the mm -mm. medical side, but mm -mm. kunyari um I'm a patient and then I am pursuing this, what are things I can do mm -hmm. to enhance my chances of being successful? Well, first of all, try to get pregnant when you're young. Okay, because age is the <laughs> most important factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can be the most successful person, and if you want to try to get pregnant at 45, you know, your chance of success is very low, right? So, yun, the number one reason why people now are seeking fertility treatment is because they're delaying their treatment. Mm -hmm. So, try to achieve that pregnancy young. And also, well, if you're at the point that you're maybe beyond 35 years old because fertility drastically goes down after uh, 35, then you can try to make yourself more healthy. Siyempre, no smoking, um, cut down on your drinking, exercise more. If you're overweight, you know, you lose the weight. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, even for your partner, the same thing goes. No, Try to live a healthy life, good sleep, for mm -hmm. uh, six to eight hours of sleep every day. Um, uh, basically that and then everything else you know you discuss with your doctor the doctor's there to find out what there what else is there that's causing your infertility thank you very mm -hmm. much doc. thank you